right, hello, my name is Anita Easterwood and I am an artist and a Kansas City, Kansas native. I was recently featured in the Black Authors and Artists Art Show at the W.E.B. Du Bois Center. And uh, that before that, I was interviewed by Mr. Nelson and he asked me about my influencers when it comes to my art. And I mentioned my dad here. And so he asked us to come back and just do a, a real and <clears throat> informal interview about our life, our work, our influences. So today I have my father with me, Mr. Lucky Easterwood. And if you could just introduce yourself. My name is Lucky Eastwood. <laughs> yeah, great to be with my daughter here today. So I'm very interested in what you have uh, to show the people and to talk about. So. Yeah, so this is actually our first time doing something like this together. Uh, so give a little background. So I, w I went to school for art, but I've been drawing my entire life. Uh, you know, it's genetics. I got the gift from him. Uh, but along the way, he has taught me a lot of things. And then I went to K-State and I got my art degree there. Uh, but I don't really think I took art as seriously as I do now until uh, a, a few years ago. Um, and so I feel like I'm very new to this art game. I'm very green. I'm a novice. Whereas for my dad, he has been in the game for a very long time. He's an OG. He's well known in the community. Uh, he's done several uh, murals, several business signs. So I just kind of, I guess I want to start by how did you cultivate your talents and like how did you learn? Well, I was um, gifted and at a young age. But when I uh, was going through school, I didn't know I was gifted. Your because, teachers never commented on it? No, I never really paid attention to the craft because I thought everybody could do it. Mm. It came easy for me, so I just didn't pay attention. And then I started winning awards and being noticed, you know, in the class and throughout the school. But it didn't faze me at that time. I was just too young to know. So at what point did you realize, wait, I have, a, I can do something that other people can't? Well, I didn't realize that till I was a early adult. Wow. I had went through, you know, the normal look for a job and go to the military and but all this time I was uh not really doing what I wanted to do, so that's how I evolved. I think it's interesting that you said none of your teachers commented on your talent. No, no, I didn't. Even if they did, I didn't hear them. I didn't really know uh, know the significance of what I was doing. And even that is a is a very big contrast to my you know my youth growing up. Uh, since he was already trained in art, he recognized it in me. And I think the first time I realized I can draw was in kindergarten. Mm -hmm. My first thought was everybody else was drawing people that was going out like this. I was like, why can't mm -hmm. their arms go down to their side? And then in first grade was the first time a teacher actually commented on it. So uh, I think that kind of shows some insight on uh, the investment that teachers have and like just even speaking it to your future. That's why I, th I think it's interesting because I know they saw it that they didn't comment on it. Um, okay, so let's fast forward a little bit. I want you to talk about the work that you would do for billboards because I know that <clears throat> back in the day we didn't have all the technologies that we had right. now. So can you just kind of walk us through that process of if someone wanted you to create a picture on a, a billboard, what all did you have to do? Well, nowadays it's much easier. It's done by computerized uh, jet printers and large scales mm -hmm. and couple of guys get on a ladder and go hang it up. Well, we didn't have that opportunity back when I was learning the craft. Everything we did was uh, <clears throat> was done by hand. It was done by great artists who knew the craft. Uh, they was from the ground up, the designer, the, uh, to get the end result would look like the photograph that the customer brought in. And we had to do it at a large scale. It was very difficult, but as, as experience teaches you, you learn how to do the heights and do the scales. So right. It was right. interesting. I love those days back then. We we could show the beginning of a, a creation and then have the whole city to see it. So you guys did it all by hand? Yes. Did I hear that? Yes. By hand. Yes. So it was very, was it easy to spot out like who wasn't trained? Two, yes, to the trained eye, it's very easy to, to spot that. Mm -hmm. 
because, well, they, we were called pictorial painters. And what that means is that we could just paint a picture, mm -hmm. didn't matter what it was. You know, now they call them murals and then they call them things at different points because of the size of them. But right. a picture is a picture. Yeah. And we were trained to do anything at any level. Mm -hmm. But then we had sign writers that went with us. People who actually did the signs, mm -hmm. who didn't do the pictures. Because at that time, uh, people weren't able to do them both. You either did one good or you did the other one good. So signs, you mean like the lettering part? Right, lettering. Okay. And uh, very seldom would you see a person come along that could do both. Right, right. And that's where my talent lies. We go out, <clears throat> excuse me, we go out to the job and if something was a mess up because the pattern wasn't right and something was off, we... Meaning we, it was a couple of guys in the field who could look and not even have to go back to the shop to correct anything because we were talented enough to make our corrections. <clears throat> Excuse me, I need to get some water. To uh, uh, hone our craft to where we can make it look like what we wanted to at a spare moment. Right. So you you are skilled in both lettering, mm -hmm. so signs and the art. And my actual uh, my actual title back then was a a sign and pictorial painter. Okay. All right. And I don't know if it's common knowledge, but it's very hard to do things on a large scale. So when mm. he's saying when you see a small image, they were tasked with making it into what? Something that's even bigger than this wall back here. And if we're, to still be in proportion, right? Right, right. And it's ironic that the same techniques that was used to paint the 16 Chapel, mm. the guy laying on his back, mm -hmm. <laughs> was a thing. You know his name is. Mm, the well, Sistine Chapel, yeah, but uh, was it Angelo? Michelangelo? Michelangelo. Yeah. We use the same technique today. Wow. Exact same technique. Nothing changes. So I want to talk about your most memorable project, at least to me, uh, is the art that you did on Quindaro. Mm. Which street is that? Seventh? Seventh and Quindaro. Seventh and Quindaro. Um, and it's titled Something to Live For, and it pictures four or five kids on the wall. Um, or maybe six, because four mm -hmm. of them were us. Mm -hmm. um, so can you just kind of briefly walk us through, first, your inspiration for that, and then second, how you ta uh, how you tackled that project? Well, the inspiration came from community activity at that time. A lot of kids were in the mischief, and about three of them got killed at that time. And one of them was my nephew. And what time? I'm sorry. 19? 19... That was 1995, I believe. Okay. 95, 96. And that's what inspired me to go to that location and do it there because the emphasis was put uh, in, that, in that spot. So I thought that was a great, you know, location for it. Mm -hmm. So people would ask me, why this? Why don't you go to this side and do it or that side? And that was the response I gave. This is us. This is where I wanted to be. Right. And right. That's, how, that's how I came about. Right. That's a perfect spot. You know, like the Quindaro ruins and just so many of us grew up on Quindaro. Mm -hmm. I grew up on Quindaro because that's where my grandma, his mother lived. So I, every day after school, we would walk down to her house. We would go to Parkwood Park um, and just enjoy our time there. So me, when I look at the mural, and even when it was like first created, it was a big deal because it was a big deal. Yes, you're you're bringing pride back into Kansas City, Kansas, you know. And it was one of the first done like that on that scale. Yeah. In this community. Yeah. No, it really was. Yes. I remember we People took a lot. They took a a lot of interest in that. As they should have. People come out of town to take pictures, backdrop, and I love that part of it. Yeah. Yeah. I remember we would uh, we were in parades because mm -hmm. I mentioned me and my siblings were on the wall and so we like re you know dressed the way we were in the wall and we would be in parades and things like that mm -hmm. and it was it was just a really really big deal. Yes, yes. Do you think that something on that scale can be done again today? Sure, sure. We uh, intend to do that actually. That's a little sneak peek that we do. We have plans to uh, revisit the wall, and hopefully, if we get the right funding, you know that we can be make it a collaboration project. Oh yes, oh, yeah. Yes. That's uh, that's exciting. Something to look forward to. Yeah. And I'm excited about it. Yeah. So, can you talk a little bit, and then we're gonna <clears throat> close out. Can you talk a little bit about um, the art scene in Kansas City and what you've enjoyed most about it? Well. Uh... Well, coming along, there was a couple of guys that were really, really good here in the community that was well known, and they had uh, got a feel that 
art was not as prevalent here in Kansas City as other places. So they eventually moved on and, and set up successes other places. Mm -hmm. But I, I just decided to stay because this is my community. Right, right. So let me ask this. Do you think that it's hard to get people to see the actual raw talent that's here in the city? Sure, it's, this is not an art. I'm not saying nothing negative, mm -hmm. but just uh, compared to other places, Kansas City don't really know what's available in true art. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, compared to an Atlanta or Chicago. Yeah. You know, so I have high hopes. So, so yeah. hopefully, what we do will inspire that type of thinking and right, you know, come right. back to the city. So it just reminds me of like just seeing the art show and the oh, art of the black authors. It's just like wow, I didn't realize all this talent was here. Oh, it's a lot of talent. And here, maybe too. if we did it think that we can only be successful other places, we could actually cultivate things that are here. And we intend to bring it out. Yeah, we will. So, Lost to See in 2019. Like this I said, my name is Anita Easterwood. And if I'm you like Easterwood. If you want to follow me on Instagram, you can find me at U underscore N-I-T-A L-I-F-E. That's U underscore Anita Life. Or you can uh, go to my website, anitaeasterwood.com. And if you are, <laughs> would you look at me like that? You might get lucky. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to reach out to him by commission work, you can email him at lmcovers at hotmail.com. Thank you for joining us today. This program is brought to you by the Kansas City Business Association.